So we're checking here. I'm putting in spacers. We got our eccentric here spinning so that it's it's nicely centered. But the spacer that we got made here from our machine shop is you know a good eighth of an inch lower is where the saw will be sitting. So the saw would be on an angle like this, and that's something you don't really want. Now you can try and move the eccentrics to the right height and match the height. Generally what we do in the field is we get something that's going to be really close, put it underneath there and get rid of that gap. And I mean, if I was doing the same saw all the time, I would have it some precision. I would have the center and I would have a spacer that fits underneath it and you know, you put that on automatically and it's absolutely perfect. And then if I had the rules ground, I would actually have the spacer ground to match. And that's what we're doing. But that's, so we're setting that up. Okay. So again, the easy glide, precision, rails that are on the machine, make it really easy to move. The clamping system on it. In this case, this has double commission. It's either left and left position button or right and right. So we're going to come over to our Williams and White bench that has nice backlighting here. We're going to stand the saw up. You can see this is a good size saw. And you can see that it's out of plumb. So the saw isn't level. So the saw isn't going to cut correctly. Now we can start to see where the problems lie with the saw. So generally get damaged all the way around when they get damaged. So in a specific spot. So we're going to try and find the ridge, the name that we give a bend in the saw. And we're going to take that ridge. So now, without this tool, you'd put that down on an anvil and you'd hammer around that saw in the circle. And you'd hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer. That has a couple bad things that go with it. The weight that you use the hammer, you're never going to get it exactly right. You're going to hit that 50 times around in a circle and it's not going to be the same pressure in any spot. It's always going to vary around a little bit. So it's not as precise of a tool. We're going to adjust that roll in between the two bottom rolls. And as you can see, as I press up down with that top roll, it's going to push the steel down into that gap and it's going to act just like a hammer does, but it's much more precise and it acts equally all the way around the saw. And because you do that, A, it's going to be quicker and B, it's going to be more accurate and your saw life will increase because instead of constantly hitting with different pressures, no matter how good we pretend we are with a hammer, we're much better off to go around the saw with one precise roll of pressure. taken that one uh, defect out of the saw and now we're going to come up into a different spot and we're going to remove a second defect. And as I said, these defects we've taken out are called, in our uh, trade, are called ridges. So we're going to take a second defect out of that saw and it'll lay down flatter yet. Start to see now. 
saw is reading very close to black and would be very close to going up into the rack. So now we're going to put a little bit of tension into this saw. Um, the body of the saw has little to no tension in it. And that's unusual for an edger saw this size. You can see there's kind of, as I apply pressure and try and get the plate to bend, there isn't a whole lot. So tension is pre-stressing the saw plate for forces that are going to act on the saw plate during the cut. So that's what we tension a saw to do. So if the saw gets warm and the body of the saw, rather than the saw starting to deviate and wobble, it's going to have the tension in it that's going to allow the rim to stay tight and the rim to cut straight. And when a saw's in a perfect world where the saw doesn't get warm, where nothing jams in, where no sticks, where there's no sawdust spilling out the side, you don't really need tension. But anytime something goes wrong in the cutting world, you want that saw to recover. And the quicker it is able to recover and the straighter it's able to stay, the less chance of that saw getting damaged while it's being cut. And so we'll put a little tension into this saw and we'll see if it is. The eye of this saw holds it has tension in it. I wish I had a little longer straight edge here, but I didn't bring one with me. But uh, there is a little break in the eye, but again, very little, very minimal. For a plumb saw, I would expect to see more break in this saw, for a saw this size. That's a 20 inch straight edge. So I'm gonna guess this is like a 26 inch saw. And there's no break anywhere in it. We're gonna use our Williams and White rolls. So we're going to go from our dishing mode where this top roll pushes into the gap in order to level the saw down. We're going to go to where the rolls are actually on top of each other. Much like a hammer blow on a hard anvil where pressure is from both sides of that, uh, from both sides of the plate, one side from the hammer, one side from the anvil, this does the same thing. And the rolls are crowned so it's very precise and again if you try and tension a saw and you tension it all the way around the saw with a hammer you're not going to get precise blows you're going to bend that blade different things are going to go wrong with it a Williams and White roll like this is going to add a specific amount of pressure all the way around the saw and you're going to be able to see the result Black to a 12 inch straight edge. Again, I should have one rim to rim, but you can still see the break in tension here in the eye. And then with a 12 inch straight edge, you can see it black. And that's eye tension. Generally, that's how PCIT or our school up north now teaches us. So. Mm -hmm.